this is the Coffee with the Geek program. It is July of 2021. We finally hit summer and things are good. And despite the rain, I think things are uh, opening up pandemic wise. So we're feeling pretty good, I think, about that. With me today, as always, is an awesome guest, Javonda Tucker. And Javonda is a middle school assistant principal with Dinwiddie County Public Schools. She is a graduate of Virginia State University, Virginia Commonwealth University, and Grand Canyon University. And she holds degrees, interestingly, in criminal justice and administration and supervision. So, Javonda, welcome. So, let me just give you the, the briefest introduction. Most of the guests that I have on the show are people that I come across on Twitter. And you, I, I came across your thread through some probably other thread. And what caught me, caught my attention about your kind of Twitter and the post that you put on there is you have, you post a lot of great like school updates and you post pictures of students, you post pictures of staff. And those really show kind of your, your love and your pride for, I think, the students and staff, which, which I love is it makes it, you know, I can sense from just those pictures that you've got energy and a lively student and, and staff and students that really kind of care and you're doing great things. I also like your Twitter because you post kind of, um, kind of your own personal anecdotes or kind of affirmations. <clears throat> and you're not really posting, and this is where I kind of fail, is I always, I'm always afraid of posting like what I think, um, but you kind of post your thoughts and they're very kind of inspirational and timely. And um, yeah, I, I just, I get a lot of, of positive vibes from them. So that, that's great. And then you're also not afraid to talk about your spiritual side, which I think also is kind of positive and um, ins inspirational. And I think, you know, so much of Twitter these days, and maybe you'll disagree or agree with me on this, but I think so much of Twitter now has become very combative and angry. And it's not as fun a place as it used to be. And so I really try and seek out the positive and the inspirational. So, and that really is you and your Twitter feed. And I think it shows through your personality. Does that sound about right? Have I summarized things? Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> so, it is the Coffee with a Geek show and asking you off offline here that um, you're not a big coffee drinker fan per se, but what's your favorite kind of drink? My go-to drink is a white chocolate mocha from Starbucks. That is my go-to. Okay. Well, that works. Then. Yeah. So a little chocolate fix, huh? <laughs> so let me, let's start. You're a very young educational leader. Tell me about the educational journey. Like, how did you get to where you are? And uh, just let's talk about that process. Well, I started out wanting to be a lawyer when I went to Virginia State University. And then from there, I went to VCU and got my master's in criminal justice. But during that time, I had a job where I worked with at-risk youth. And once I got laid off there, I found a job at, at um, special education alternative school. And they paid for me to get my teacher's license. And from there, that's how it all started. Was there, can you kind of capture a moment? I mean, for me, I kind of, there was kind of a, a year for me where I felt like teaching all of a sudden, I just caught the teaching bug or the education bug. Was there like kind of a defining moment well, working at the alternative school, I was able to work. I worked with the middle school and high school population, and those were students who received services, but they were also kind of labeled as at-risk youth. And I just saw so much more in them. And so when I was able to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations and help them, you know, achieve academic goals they set for themselves, like it really pushed me to, you know, further my education and, you know, and to give them the learning experiences that I had growing up. Nice, nice, yeah. And it's really interesting because you really kind of captured the essence of what teaching is and really kind of making sure everybody can 
can achieve and get empowered through education. So from your stance, again, as um, you know, a relatively new educational leader on the scene, what are your kind of, you take out your crystal ball, what are your, your visions and your goals moving forward? Well, I'm going into my third year as an AP, so hopefully in the next year, maybe trying to transition to an elementary school principal. Um, and then with the five years, hopefully I'm in that position. And when I think about maybe like 10 years down the road, um, a position that focused solely on the school culture and curriculum at the district level. So let's kind of uh, springboard off of that. How, in your opinion, how do you, how do you kind of cultivate school culture to, to be a positive place? Well, I would say that it truly starts from the, from the top. Um, I, I've had a tweet that talked about the principal. When you see the school principal or whoever, um, the assistant principal, you should see the school's mission and vision and action. So when you see me in the building, you would know exactly what we're about and what we want to do for our young people, their families, and our stakeholders. Yeah, I love that. And again, that's kind of what I caught from your Twitter feed is that you really kind of proudly, you know, promote and support the great things that are going on with your, your school. And I, I think from the, you know, the happy faces you see on the kids and even the teachers, I think it, it feels again, just from those pictures and capturing those moments that you've created kind of a positive affirming school that, that people are, you know, having fun, yes, but also there's there's learning and there's 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 growth because you're 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 proud of, of what's going on there. Is that am I capturing that all that right? <laughs> Absolutely. We want everyone, whether it's our parents, our students, our teachers, to feel like when they enter our building that we have truly rolled out the red carpet for each one of them. And we want to provide meaningful learning experiences that will take them not only to the next grade level, but through life. So tell me about, we've been through probably the most challenging year in, in my career um, in this pandemic. Can you tell me the the kind of positives and even the challenges that you had throughout this year? What let's reflect a little. So I would say for successes, our teachers and our students, they gave it all they had. And at such a time as this, you know, we worked together and we got things done. Um, we had to do them differently, of course, and you know, but everyone was flexible and receptive to, you know, the many changes that we had to make to make sure that we did, you know, give a hundred percent, no matter what came our way. So that was, that was really, really great at our school and district wide as well. Um, and the challenges, technology was a challenge because, you know, the school provided technology for our young people, but, you know, the access, the limited connectivity issues that was ongoing, but, even in that, our school, um, our district worked really, really hard to support every family. For you as, as one of the leaders of the building, how did you handle the stresses of, of the year, both, you know, maybe through students and even, uh, you know, parents, the stress there and, and teachers, you know, there was a lot of emotion that, that went into this year. How did you kind of manage that and, and balance it out and keep people positive? Well, the one thing I had to do, I had to make sure that I operated from a place of grace. Um, this school year, I had a tremendous loss. Um, I lost my grandparents that raised me. I lost them four days apart. Um, oh, and so, you know, trying to work full time and deal with that too. But just, just knowing that I had such great students, staff, you know, around me, that kind of made me okay. So I approach the school year like, hey, we've, we've had some losses and some challenges. And a lot of them, they fed off of me. So I had to make sure, I had to make sure that, you know, I showed up. I was smiling, even though sometimes it was hard, but just to let them know, hey, it's okay. And we are in this thing together. And so that really, really helped keep the momentum going and keeping everyone as positive as we could be this school year. 
Yeah, I think that's a really great way to kind of summarize it. We all really needed to kind of lean on each other. And, and although that was hard, it was also inspirational in and of itself, you know, to kind of pull off that. So um, as I mentioned, well, let's, let's talk technology. Let's back up before we move on. So moving forward, um, what, what's kind of your wish list as far as making things smoother? You know, again, I think in education, from what we've learned, we have to be a little nimble. If we need to go remote, we can go remote. If we need to go hybrid, we can go hybrid. If we need to go concurrent, we can go concurrent. Um, what's kind of your wish list of technology at this point to make things run smooth? Do you have a maybe a wish list? I know it's a big question, but I, I don't. I, our district does so well with rolling out so many things to our young people and our teachers to improve education. So I really don't, I never don't have one at the moment. That's, that's actually a good one. That's a good problem, right? <laughs> that means you've, you've kind of balanced, you've balanced things out and you feel like the challenges that come your way, you can handle them, right? Absolutely. So as I mentioned already, kind of several times, you know, I love your Twitter profile because I think it represents the positive things of social media and it, it certainly brings up a positive to me. Can you tell me about, you know, your thoughts on social media, where it stands, what you'd like it to be, what you get from it, what you avoid from it? Um, and then maybe even talk just educationally. How, how do we prepare our kids to manage a social media that can sometimes be crazy and appropriate, but also offer, uh, you know, beauty at times. So for me, um, well, my Twitter, you know, I was encouraged by my past um, school principal to get one. And I'm like, no, I really don't want a Twitter page, <laughs> but I would say it has been such a, such a blessing to me. Um, I've connected with some wonderful people. And I truly believe that social media is what you make it. You know, I really don't keep up with anything negative. That's not that's not me. I follow people that are that you know share the same values, uh, are into the same type of things. So it kind of protects me when I go into my feed and you know I see everything that's coming through. So I'm just mindful of what I attach myself to to keep my focus and my you know my mindset in place. And I tell the, I tell my young people the same thing. You know, social media is how you handle it. You know, so I only post positive things and what my what my students are doing, with the great things the teachers are doing, because that, that's my focus. So I'm gonna throw this one out of left field a little bit. You mentioned you have a son. Um, where is he at educationally wise and what are kind of the, what are, what are your kind of hopes and dreams for him these days? My son is a rising sixth grader. Um, <laughs> Makes me want to cry. I know. Uh, but, you know, he, I've been, I'm blessed with such an amazing, amazing kid. He already knows what he wants to do. Um, he's really big into football. Um, he wants to go to Ohio State and study um, business management. So he has, you know, he has that already set. Um, he is dedicated. He's just a really, really awesome kid. And I just I just want to be able to be around to see the great things that he's going to do. And, you know, just be a proud mom. <laughs> yeah. How does, uh, it sounds like he's, he enjoys athletics. Um, does he interact with technology? Do you have, you know, the, the parent fears about technology? How do you keep a positive approach? You know, you, you have such a positive uh impact I think on technology how do you kind of convey that to him and, and you know and maybe even larger to other students well for my son like um you know get mom detective so he has there a lot of blocks <laughs> and stuff so there are things that he can't you know look up but we talk we have open dialogue all the time about the dangers of certain things but you know he's into you know football basketball like the gaming type stuff he, he does not have like Instagram or anything like that, not yet. I told him he had to be like 30 and out of my house. Before he could get it. <laughs> That's a good rule. <laughs> we, we talk, you know, we talk about yeah. it um, and just being mindful of what he does. But, you know, I do I do random checks. 
you know, and I have a lot of access to his phone and, you know, his iPad and things like that. So it's going well so far. I think, you know, honestly, that's really one of the most balanced approaches is just um, letting your kids know that you are kind of keeping track of them, looking over their shoulder. And I know, you know, most kids may say they don't like that, but I think they do want to know that their parent is looking out for them and knows dangers and that sort of thing is going to you know, be there for them. And I also think what you said about keeping an open dialogue with him about social media or just technology in general and know that, you know, there's good out there, there's bad out there. Um, you know, I think that's the perfect attitude to take with, with that. Um, so tell me about, uh, let's, let's, let's go a little, dig a little personal here. So uh, any big plans for the summer? What, what are kind of your future so, well, let's just talk summer plans. Anything fun? Well, I just came back from vacation last time. We went out of town, had a blast. Um, actually had my first milkshake ever. Really? <laughs> At 37, I had my first milkshake <laughs> ever. Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but we're going to take a few day trips here and there. Um, Currently, I am the summer school administrator, so I have that going on as well. But, you know, I do have some a few things planned out. Nice. And how do you kind of balance the, the parent's job? Because, you know, admin is a job that you don't really put to sleep ever. Um, how do you keep that, that fun balance? Well, I try not to bring my work home with me. So I put in a lot of, you know, long hours in the building. But, the, you know, of course, there are some things that you have to work on. So when we come home, you know, we have a set routine. And then when he's asleep, I'm still up which is fine, but I try to make sure that when I come home from work, that I am just mom. That's nice. That's nice to, to kind of put that hat away for a while. All right, so are you ready for the Speed Geek questions? These are uh, <laughs> fun and could be a little dangerous, but... <laughs> so the general idea is to, you know, they can be short answer, but if you want to elaborate, by all means, you can do that. But. Let's just spin the dial and see how many we can get through here. So this is a good one. So if you could design your own school, what would it look like? Oh, wow. A lot of <laughs> open space, um, flexible seating everywhere, everywhere. I would love to have um, various learning pods, um, just a lot of graphics on the wall, just things that are outside of the norm. Seriously, like I would love to have, oh my goodness, I could do so, so much. <laughs> I definitely, I would want my office to be in the middle of the school, not the front. I want to, um, like the Cambridge Brewer, they have like a skateboard type thing in his school. I would love to have that at my school. Um, just a lot of open space, more, you know, not the traditional platform. We feel like we, that's the only place that we can provide instruction. I want to see kids outside on the football field, on the bleachers, you know, at the picnic tables out there reading books, doing science experiments and things like that. Yeah, that sounds fun. And I think the challenge, you know, I know in New York State, we have a lot of schools that were built in the 70s and they're just, uh, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations about, you know, windows have to be this big and this way. And so it's often challenging. But uh, I think as these schools start to age and we start to build new ones, hopefully we can re-envision and have some, put those ideas into practice. Okay, so what's your favorite educational blog? So I like Middle Way get so many because I'm a middle school administrator so they have so many like, teacher resources instructional practices that they give and like little tips on you know how to do you know various things as it relates to middle school and it's some it's um they give information that I can actually share with my parents as well so I really really like middle web middle web yeah that is a good one I have seen that that kind of reminds me I need to take a better look at that one <laughs> <laughs> so I think I know the answer to this one but uh what's your favorite social network um, Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Yes. Any other? Do you are you on any other social networks? Facebook, no, any of those? Just, just Twitter. Just Twitter and stuck with yes. that. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite app? Um, YouTube. YouTube, 
And uh, do you have any favorite shows or things that you like to watch or like home improvement or do it yourself stuff or just cat a videos? A variety of things. I'm telling you whether it's music, recipes. I just love just have, being able to just type something in and boom, I have like a thousand videos that shows me how to do certain things. Do you see that? So it sounds like you do some of your own kind of personal learning from YouTube. Do you see, we'll kind of talk education here. Do you see YouTube having a place? I know it has a little bit of a place right now, but do you see it having, maybe let's just not use YouTube, but video in general in a, in a bigger role for education? I believe so, definitely. Yeah, I think, especially with the pandemic, I think, um, teachers learned how to use video, you know, through Zoom or whatever. And now I think the next step is to really maybe use video in more powerful ways, like embedding questions, making it more engaging. So, yeah. all right, let's do a couple more here. Uh, what's your favorite way to unplug? Well, I think my son, of course, um, but also reading and journaling are really big for me. Uh, have any recommendations for reading for the summer for teachers? I mean, uh, Hamish Grimm Relentless, that always kind of gets me, you know, puts it back, everything back in perspective for me, but it also just reminds you to keep going. Like, you got this, keep going. So that's really one of my favorite books. Nice. All right. And let's do one last one. Can actually throw a curveball at you. What's uh, what's on your bucket list? What's the thing you'd like to do? A place you'd like to visit? A person you'd like to meet? What would be a bucket list item? Oh wow! I would love to go to to Paris. To I would Paris. love to meet Paris. Yes, and I would love to go skydiving. Believe it or not. Skydiving. Okay. Yes. Those are a couple. That that one I can't do the skydiving. <laughs> I would be too scared of that one, but. Well, Javonda, thank you so much for joining me. I will keep following you on Twitter. You and I really, again, positive breeds positive. So it's just so nice to come across your Twitter. And I, I really look forward to seeing all the great things you're going to do and accomplish. Uh, and thank you for joining me. Thank you so much.